purpose of this video is to look at the complexities in exploration oil and gas. This is to look at a potential property and evaluate whether or not there is actually oil in it. If we were to talk about this and dive into each individual concept in their own video, we could probably be sitting here from dusk till dawn. So let's just jump into it, shall we? Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Francis. I am your petroleum engineering mentor for today's video. And today we're going to be talking about what goes in to finding oil. And whatever takeaway you get from this video, I need you to keep two things in mind as you watch this video. The first one is, is that Finding oil is like the stock market. It is a guessing game. And sometimes you are just completely wrong. And what you interpret may not be the same as what your other petroleum engineering friend would also interpret. And the second thing is data is king and data is money. You know, there's so much geological data that you can use. Um, most uh, specifically is logs, which we'll sort of talk about in today's video. I know I haven't mentioned that previously, but um, yeah, data is king. So got it? Okay, let's jump into the computer, shall we? Okay, so let's say that you're given a plot of land that looks something like this and this this could be uh 40 acres 60 acres um 80 acres this is your area everything is unitized um this is your land to make do with what you wish the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need to look at geology so one thing that geologists look for are structural traps so Traps are geological formations that trap the oil. And basically, geologists will look at oil migration and try to determine where the actual source rock is. This could be anything like faults, uh, folds, maybe there's a gas cap. The other thing that they'll look for is logs so logs are these measurements that are made from logging tools they are data that is transcribed into these squiggly lines kind of like stock market squiggly lines if you held them sideways here they look like this so for instance let's say for example gamma ray so gamma ray will look something like this and from logs like this you can from the trends, you can actually determine what kind of rock it is. So you can tell that this rock over here is similar to this rock over here. And you can do that by running this straight line. I know it's not straight, sorry, but you get my point. This straight line, this shale baseline test will actually tell you that this, these two rocks are a shale. Well, what is this? What is this long line over here? Well, it could be many things. It could be, it could be uh, sandstone. It could be limestone. It could be dolomite. I don't know. But the thing is, when you run this log, you need to run several other logs. And this could be anything from porosity. This could be uh, resistance curves. And from there, you can actually determine what kind of rock that would be. That is the lesson for another day. I am not a geologist, so I can't really explain it any better than that. But <laughs> let's look at that. Uh, so you have your logs and you looked at offset well data, which is also logs. You looked at the reservoir properties, which you got from the adjacent well data so you so from there you can start already developing your production curves when but the thing is 
Let's say you have no offset well data. You have no predetermined ability to guess where what layers are what, okay? Another thing that is done is you drill what is called pilot wells. Pilot wells are, wells are not drilled with the intention of making oil and making money. They're drilled more for the potential of just getting information because sometimes you have to spend money in order to make money and oil field is no different. You're gonna be spending millions of dollars just drilling all of these pilot holes to get all the information you can actually narrow down your search. So besides logs, another thing that geologists and petroleum engineers would look for is you call it the dip angle. So I know this is sort of flat right now, but let's say for instance, we're gonna look at the side now, flat line you see at the surface, it's actually kind of like this. Your reservoir is actually dipping in a certain direction. So let's say that here, this over here is the is the high ground. So this, let's label it. That is the height, the top height of your pay zone. And it dips uh, this way. So if this is your pay, your oil may have been migrating upwards from a financial standpoint it's going to cost you more pipe to drill in deeper so what you could do is choose your land right here or maybe even up here you have absolutely no idea it's up to your interpretation and you need to learn or you need to figure out how the oil migration is going to be so I hope that kind of puts it into effect. This costs a lot of money, and if you want to work in oil and gas exploration, you have to be comfortable with the idea that you there's there could be nothing there, and you just lost the company a lot of money. But it is what it is. There's simulation software now where you can actually run a program and determine how the reservoir behaves, but... This is more of a guess and check approach, which um, can be tough, but that's how everything is narrowed. So I hope you enjoyed, oops. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, I hope I made sense. I'm not, I don't think I'm qualified to really be a teacher in this. So let me know what you think in the comments down below and maybe I'll do a follow up if uh, you found value in this video, please leave me a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments down below. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you next week with a brand new video. So, bye guys.